Hey everyone, so here I am in my usual brewing bunker um, and I'm just going to give you a really quick sort of rundown of what I'm going to do with that leftover yeast. I'm going to make sort of like a half gin, half sort of northern hemisphere foresty sort of brew. Not too sure how it'll turn out, but anyway, we'll see how it goes. So what I have in this little mortar and pestle here is about 10 grams of juniper berries, six cardamom pods, uh, about half a teaspoon of caraway seeds, there are those little ones in there, um, and two cloves somewhere at the bottom. And all I'm gonna do is just give them a bit of a mash up. So after I've crushed all those in the mortar and pestle, I have another secret ingredient, which is pine needles, including some of the branches as well here. Uh, I've just stripped them off so they'll fit a bit better into the demijohn kind of mouth at the top there. So I want to get them all the way in. If I need to in a bit, I'll just use something to poke them in, but all the needles should get in there. And once again, this is experimental brewing at its finest, I guess. Or well, probably not even at its finest. <laughs> I think that should do. I'll get them in. I'm going to poke it in with this stem. The only bad thing about this, I guess, too, it will bring our volume down uh, as far as taking up space in the demijohn. And we'll add these bits in. And use a funnel to do this if you like. Seems all right thus far. And this was just the juniper berries, a couple of cloves, stick of cinnamon, uh, six cardamom pods and half a teaspoon of caraway seed. All very uh, Northern European sort of flavours. Sorry, I'm kind of in and out off camera here. It's just a very quick, quick evening project before dinner. But hopefully it'll taste like, I don't know, it might taste a bit like Christmas, might taste a bit like gin. I've never used ale yeast, and yeast is usually one of the main factors in the flavor of a drink. So that should be interesting. All right, next step is filling her up with water. All right, so the next step is dissolved about probably 800, 900 grams of brown sugar. And we'll gently pop that in, same as a mugwort beer. Just a lot more liquid here. So to cut out some of the boring bits, I've just filled this up with a bit more boiled water um, and given it a really good shake, added in two teaspoons of yeast nutrients. It's just like a white powder, essentially. Um, and the next thing to do now, which I didn't do last video, is to take a gravity. So I've got my sanitized juice bottle here. It's got a little bit of sanitizer left in it. It's no rinse sanitizer, you get it from the brew shop. Um, brilliant. Couple of tablespoons in, give it a shake, you're done. Don't have to rinse it or anything. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, if I can fit it in screen. So, let's get that. I'm gonna sanitize everything again, which you should be doing every time you brew. And what I'm gonna do is, Sit this into here, it doesn't matter if a few berries and that get in there. It's all good. So, this is the thing I was supposed to use last time. It's a hydrometer. And it's got these marks on the side here. Should be reverse for you guys, but it shows essentially uh, how much sugar content um, the mix has. And that way you can kind of, it's even got a little, um, thing on the side here will give you an approximate uh, you can see that percentage uh, alcohol by volume percentage depending on where it's sitting in here so what we do is we just sit that gently in these things are pretty sensitive 
as far as like they're easy to break, uh, believe me. And give it a little spin and then wait to see where it's gonna sit. And then you make a note of that. So it's sitting about, it would be expressed as uh, 1.060 isn't too bad and we can expect from that possibly up to about eight percent so you know quite quite strong especially for a beer type drink um, in some parts of the world pine needles were used as a bittering agent the same as hops or mugwort um, people were making alcohol alcohol out of all sorts of things through history just depending on where they were and what they had access to but hopefully all these flavors will combine nicely and it'll be something like a I don't know British or Scandinavian or maybe German style flavor I'm not sure all right so that's probably actually not too bad it leaves us with a lot of like a bit of room again I'll just um with room again for the yeast to have a bit of space to um to ferment. So what we're gonna do is now take what yeast we have left. We're gonna pop it in here like so. All right, the yeast there on the side. Um, that's all right. And then again, we're going to grab our bung right here. I just want to clear this one. Fresh water into that. There we go, about even. But I've lost the cap. There it is. So we'll pop that in there. Pop that into there. I'll just give this a wee shake like that, just to get the yeast kind of to stop floating on the top as much. Maybe incorporate a little bit into the must. Oh, this is called a must, the liquid you're brewing. <clears throat> All right, and that's about it. Like, I don't know how this is going to turn out. I don't know what it's going to taste like. I know roughly it could be around 8% alcohol. Um, but anyway, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.